Hey. This is Maggie, everybody. Keith's here. Maggie loves the red shed. She's been in there a couple times. Um, she actually has her own red shed. She thinks I'm copying her. I told her I am. First time trenching. All right, here we are. Running a trencher. Excited to see it. Looks pretty gnarly. Guy promised me I wouldn't kill myself. Show me the controls. Seems easy. Might be famous last words. Gonna be using it so we can lay the electric line and water line from the house to the red shed. Yeah, trenching was a lot of fun. I never used it before. Oh, I, I, that, that top thing really drops quick, so I didn't know that to begin with, and it kind of scared me. We got figured out my grandpa helped me out with trenching. I think it is good to have two people with that. Uh, we had to get the depth to 18 inches for um, underground conduit. That's kind of the standard. Um, so it's nice having him coming along telling me, hey, get the higher, hey, put it lower. I would say my trenching ability is a C plus. Uh, probably up from a C minus. Um, to save money on the trencher, my, my uncle also needed a trencher. Uh, so we took it over to, to help him out. Um, we actually ended up breaking the trencher and they had to send a guy out to fix it. Um, the pump of the hydraulic, the hydraulic pump fell off, which sounds intense to me. He fixed it like with wrenches and didn't use any parts, so I'm not quite sure like exactly what happened. But, and then we got it stuck in the trench once and we had to use a skid loader to get it out. So, unfortunately I don't have footage of that. I wish I would've, because it was, a sight to see. We uh, put a new door on the front of the red shed. Uh, the old door was cool, but the holes in it were uh, left something to be desired. Initially, I was thinking maybe doing a like a, a wood door, um, but. They were kind of expensive, and uh, the more I thought about it, you know, you get weather, um, you know, going in and out, warm, cold. I, I just felt like it might deteriorate a lot quicker than maybe uh, a steel door would. So we ended up going with a steel door. It's new, it was in a frame. Uh, I definitely recommend getting a door in a frame so that you don't have to like worry about it being exact. I mean, you're already gonna have a lot of problems anyway. It's so getting one that's already pre-hung and you know it's gonna be perfect and the frame was made for it. Uh, makes one less issue. So the door opening, this is interesting, the door opening was 36 inches. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get a, like a 36 inch door. Um, I initially did that. It was like so hard to get it fit because it was 36 inches, but then with the frame it would be like 37 and a half inches. So we'd have to cut one of the studs out, but then like only have to move the stud a little bit. And so I'm like, I'm just not gonna deal with it. We cut every possible board that we could out under the loft. And we were half an inch bigger than what the door size was, which, you know, when you're framing something, you like to have a little bit more than that a half an inch, uh, uh, you know, margin of error, especially when Someone like me is doing the framing. It was blue in color, uh, like a light blue. Wasn't a huge fan of that light blue color. Um, so I did some research trying to see if we could make it look like wood, um, but still kind of have the durability of steel. And there's some people that have tried it uh, using Czar wood stain. And we got a texture brush and we kind of brushed it on with the texture brush. It looked pretty good. Put our second coat on, look really good. Uh, the Czar wood stain also, there is a sign on it on the top that says 
can spontaneously combust, make sure all the products are used to stain this, you put in a sealable container filled with water. So that scared me a little bit, but you know, it's always good to live a, a life of danger. Uh, so here's the door, uh, put a door handle on, but like I said, it's great to have the frame with the door because it seals pretty tight. Uh, so that's been good. I wanted one that had a lot of panes in it. Um, so it adds a little bit of light in there and also kind of makes it have that old wood feel. Um, so we finished up the wiring. We've had a few uh, issues. So the two biggest mistakes I made, um, and I'll, I got some props here. Uh, so we used both uh, yellow and white Romex. The way we're gonna do the inside, we're gonna have like a little uh, box. Um, so you can use both as long as all the white's on like a circuit and all the yellow's on a circuit, the way I understand it. But we have one spot in there where they actually come together. Uh, we use yellow to power, uh, send power to the switch that's gonna power the overhead lights. Uh, and so I've been told by electricians that's not quite what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, so, you know, that happens when you're trying to learn and you're trying to do stuff, you're gonna make mistakes. So when he came to a and asked me about his idea, um, you know, honestly, I thought it was doable. All right, another great day in the red shed, no wind, sunny, 65, gonna be a great day out. All right, so gotta string this Romex wire. This is gonna be what the electrical hooks to in the house through this gray conduit. Each one of these sections is 10 feet long. Uh, it's gonna go in this trench eventually. So originally I tried to uh, just force that yellow cable through um, and it didn't really work very well because uh, it has to go so far. So I had the string in there. I tied the string around, made a loop with the wire put the string all the way through and then just pulled really hard and popped through on the other end. So one down, about uh, 10 to go. And that's how far we gotta go, long ways. I think, you know, the building process, um, I think it's something you gotta, gotta enjoy as you, as you go along uh, each day uh, that, hey, I'm, gonna do something productive today, I'm gonna get something done today, I get something to, to you know, be proud of today. Uh, but you can't go into every day thinking that it's gonna be perfect, um, that you know, what you had planned for the day is gonna get done and that there won't be hiccups. I have a little bit of doubt about the electricity. Um, I've gotten down a little bit on just like how we're gonna get it done, but I like to be a positive uh, person, so I know it's gonna get figured out. And uh, if it doesn't, I'm going Amish. We're definitely facing the the plans going awry that John Steinbeck talks about. I think I think I think Lenny's getting ready to beat up that kid and or guy, whatever he beats up, and we're, we're trying to get it stopped. We know what's coming. We just got to find a way to stop it, and we'll stop it. But yeah, that's where we're at. New Baytown had slept for a long time. The men who governed it politically, morally, economically had so long continued that they were set. All right, you don't want me reading to you. So you should definitely check out Audible. And all Red Shed listeners get a free audiobook just for signing up by using this link.